Hi, welcome to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler being converted into a global expedition and research boat. Trev's upstairs finishing off the door for our new crew member's room. The guys are continuing to work on the wings, they're almost done. <laughs> Beautiful things that they are. And we're picking up our first crew member this week. As you can see, I'm sitting on the wing, <laughs> so uh, one of our stabilizers. I'm on the starboard side. With our new crew member coming on board, having such a passion for marine life, I wanted to introduce to you a new use for our wings that you may not have thought of, but was in the plans right from the get-go, and that is underwater photography. So we're going to have a little uh, ladder to make it easy to get on and off this thing, and we'll have cameras fore and aft on the stabilizer wing itself. It'll we can have it above or below, um, and what that means is, is we can um, do photography that uh, we can keep the boat stable, we can keep the camera stable while it's under the water. A, a lot of times underwater photography is quite difficult because you've got a pole underneath or you're holding the camera there in your hand, but this is going to make it really possible. And of course recording all of that, uh, steaming, you know, 11 knots <laughs> through the water. So it's going to make some really interesting photography, we can't wait. Um, and also being able to access the water, both the sides of the boat, and we'll have a platform, a dive platform at the back, so pretty exciting. So where do we need to go to pick up our new crew member? Well, it's pretty much the other end of the country. Um, it's 24 hours of solid driving one way, so it's going to take us a bit longer than that by the time we stop and do what we need to do to get here. The plan is a five and a half hour trip on a train from Bundaberg down to Brisbane. Then we're going to jump on a plane, we're heading from Brisbane down to Adelaide, which is at the south end of the country, and then we're renting a car and driving all the way back to Bundaberg. So that whole trip's going to take us a couple of days, trains, planes and automobiles, <laughs> and all of those cliches. But the cool thing about this trip is we're going to be going across the Australian outback, so um, not necessarily through the centre of Aussie, but pretty down close to the, um, to the middle with all the desert and that sort of thing. So we'll have some awesome shots to show you, um, and show you some of the interior of Australia. It's just kind of ironic that the first expedition on Brewpeg happens to be a road trip. So some of you might wonder why are we not just getting the crew member to fly to us? And there's a really, really simple explanation. It's top secret. Okay, it's, it's not top secret, that was a lie. But it is classified. <laughs> Brewpeg's a boat full of adventurous souls and we want to make sure that we can maintain that with our crew. In saying that, we've got one spare spot available for crew and we're looking for someone awesome. We're going to be heading to the Barrier Reef in Australia. This is one of the seven wonders of the world. It's a pretty phenomenal place. Um, it's slowly dying with coral bleaching. As um, water temperatures get higher and water acidification happens and things, the coral's actually getting bleached and dying off. So we want to get out there and film as much as we can before that happens. Um, there's some stunning scenery and photography to be done out there. Um, some of the coolest shots of manta rays. Um, I had a friend that worked at an island and he was saying that the manta rays out there can get to like four meters wide. Um, and it you know, feels like somebody's put a blanket over top of you when you're swimming along and they cruise over top. Um, there's some pretty awesome things that we want to see out that way. There's also whales not far south of us, um, humpback whales and then also blue whales to the bottom of the country that we want to get to. This is all leading to us getting to New Zealand and then across to Antarctica. This boat is built to go to some pretty remote and awesome places and we want to take our crew with us. So if you're the sort of person that's looking for a pretty damn adventurous life and you want to be on board with us, get in touch with us. We'll have an application coming out shortly. Look at this shit. You try and do a day's work on a boat and half the fucking crew are doing that. <laughs> Come on, we've got work to do. <laughs> But doing a project like this is more than just the engineering. We love engineering and it's a huge part of what we do. Um, but it's also having crew on board and organising that, it's, it's organising projects, it's uh, all the behind the scenes stuff. Um, but one of the other things is uh, maintaining our health. And with me having a chronic health condition, uh, it's quite a challenge sometimes. And as you would have seen, uh, we were down uh, in Brisbane to get, and I was getting some bunch of tests. I just want to let everyone know that I'm okay. It's just a little deterioration in my condition. The collagen and the elastin in my body and the tissues, that's all of the tissues of the body, uh, get weaker over time. Um, so that's why, you know, a sloth is a great nickname for me. <laughs> so I have to move really slowly. It's actually really hard for me to move fast. 
<laughs> I can pull something. Like I've just got a, um, a finger that's uh, um, slightly dislocated today. So, um, yeah, but you know, you cope with these things as anyone with a condition like this knows. And uh, we'll keep you updated, but there's nothing to worry about. And um, as always on Brewpeg, we'll find a way. There's a bit of our 12 mil plate that we got left. So we're gonna go through and mark this up for our doublers. Um, doublers are gonna be for the winches, which are getting mounted up on the back corner of the wheelhouse roof. Right up in there. So we're gonna climb up onto the wheelhouse roof because we need to have a bit of a think about um, how big we're doing these doublers. But also we need to understand how the winches are gonna fit nicely underneath that roof. So they're asymmetric. They're not like, you know, a symmetrical shape or anything like that, which is, which is fine. We just have to take account of that when we start building these doublers and allow for it on the roof. What have we got? We'll call that 370 mil long. Radio technical drawing completed. Let's go and measure it up. This is the space on the back of the wheelhouse that we need to figure it out. So underneath the back edge of the wheelhouse, you see there's a wee bit of a lip there. So we need to um, make that area wide enough to hold these winches. I want to show you a regular part of our day. This probably happens, I don't know, half a dozen times every day. When we have a whole bunch of compromises and we have to figure out what a new plan or strategy is with some engineering, Jess and we sit down and have a bit of a natter and actually figure out what's the best thing for the boat and then we go forward with that plan. All right, so the issue we have up top is the winches are 370 wide and the lip on the back of the wheelhouse is 300 wide, so they don't fit, they hang out over the side by 300. You're saying they come up from underneath it? Yeah, okay. we'd have to cut the lip and hang them out over the side, right? Which is not what we want, because then they... And this is assuming you're putting them underneath, upside down? Yes, and my thought was, how do you feel about them going on top with a stainless box over them to shield that, them? That was my original preference. Okay, all right, yeah. sweet. I, I prefer that, yeah. Okay, I've been trying to keep them underneath for weather protection, Yeah. but because then we don't have to go so ridiculous with the water pressure. Yeah. But, but putting it up top is way, way simpler and faster. But if we're getting enough water that it's going over the top of the wheelhouse, oh, it's most of the time. Yeah, no, it's spray that's the issue mainly, I think. But so I'm, a box would be alright then for spray, I'm not right? rolling out, we do a couple of dives. <laughs> <laughs> no using the boat as a... Submarine. As a submarine. <laughs> well, I haven't built... You're, a, you're banned. I haven't even built a periscope. <laughs> um, Just build a little submarine and get it out of your system. <laughs> Maybe, that's the next project. Um, you're right, laughing, dogs, so. but you know... It I might think happen. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I've been thinking about one actually. Um, anyway, let's just let's. Uh, okay, distraction. Let's, okay. Aside from the point. <laughs> Back to the topic. Um, so a box, yeah. Okay, so, so you're happy you, for them up top. Have you got enough stainless? Or are you going to make it? Oh, I have to. I have to get some made. I haven't got enough stainless, but I'll I'll get Cam to fold up a box. Okay. But all you're doing today is just getting the double on arm the and melting them. Yeah. Yeah, and if, then the box can be built later. Yeah, if I can mount them on the roof, that it's so much simpler. They should be able to handle a bit of water though, eh? Theoretically. Because they're, they're like a four-wheel drive winch. Yeah, but we're also going to go balls out trying to waterproof them as well. Yeah, yeah. So. But if it rains for the next couple of days, it's not a big deal. I'll probably put a bucket over the top of them or something. And then it won't, it, they'll be fine. But. Yeah. Um, all right, sweet. I just wanted to make sure you're okay with them. So location then? Yep. Right, uh, right against the lip? No, no, no. They'll be back a wee bit. Um, probably, prob well, probably about a foot. Back about a foot because that gives water a chance to pass behind them and oh, run down to the yeah, drain yeah, and true, gives yeah. me room to put the box no, on. That's a and, great idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, the further away from the pulley I mount them, the easier it is for them to coil up properly. Right. So, like factoring that in Do as well. they coil up well? Did you test it the other day? Oh, uh, no, we had it misaligned, so it didn't coil up properly. Oh, right. But that's not the winch's fault, that's our fault. But they shouldn't be too bad if they're on a, on a um, they should, drive. Yeah, they, they should, they should um, coil pretty well, shouldn't they? I think so, and particularly if we align them well, I think they'll be fine. All right. Yeah. Cool. Alright, cool. Thank so you. this will be ready in about 10 minutes if you want to coordinate your timing. Yeah, sounds great. Thank cool. you. Alright, well that was easy. So this is the plate that gets bolted underneath the winch. We use that as our template to do the, um, the tap. We're going to drill and tap into the 12mm steel. That's going to be um, what we bolt onto. Pretty simple now that we can just put it straight on the top of the roof. We'll make some stainless boxes so that we can keep them waterproof. Problem solved. Thinking something reasonably big. So what do we do there?
Radiuses doesn't really matter which diameter you use, just so long as you've got one. It takes the stress out of the corners because it's um, difficult for a crack to start on a curved section. I always just use a five inch disc because it's easy and I've got a hundred thousand of them laying around. Also means that I know what the radius of pretty much every single doubler on the boat is. All our windows are done with five inch radius. Just kind of keeps everything easy and simple. Two doublers, so I weld them together and um, then I can just drill and tack them. I've got to obviously clean up so I haven't radius this corner or the one over in the far side there. Um, that'll that'll come. But yeah, basically I'll tack these together and that means I can drill and tap them and I know that they're going to be absolutely exactly the same as each other. This is what happens when an engineer says, oh, I need to just sand a little bit. You, you pretty much know a grinder's coming out. On the bottom of our winches here, the bolt pattern is, those four bolts go through this metal plate, this, um, I think it's six mil steel plate, and they go into the um, aluminium housing that the winch is, um, the high tensile M8. You can see the three bolts, if I come down there, see that stud pattern there with those three holes? That's what bolts it to the doubler. Um, I don't know if I'm 100% comfortable with that. Ideally, I'd like that plate to be bigger and have the bolts out the side so that it's like a wider foot pattern. Um, but it's obviously strong enough given that they sell them to lift 5,000 pounds with that bolt pattern right there. So I'm just gonna roll with that for starters and if it's not big enough, I can always make a bigger um, plate that goes under the winch later on. Right, important ones, clearance holes that aren't really that important. Last hole. So today I managed the doublers cut out, um, the four clearance holes drilled, the three holes to be tapped drilled. I can't find my M8 tap, so we're going to do a trip into town and grab a tap tonight, hopefully, and um, I'll have that tap tomorrow and we can bolt them to the winches, and then we're ready to go up the top and start welding the doublers on. Um, align the winches up and everything and then yeah, basically blast the weld onto those. Some people often ask why we do things the way we do or you know it doesn't necessarily make logical sense and it's because sometimes we're restricted by the tooling that we can get. I needed to get an M8 tap and I went into town thinking it would be a pretty straightforward thing um, and I went to the bloke and said I need to grab an M8 by 1.25 tap and he said oh excellent we've got three options and he took me to the shelf. A packet of three is literally all they had Three options, three taps, one of them's M8. Luckily it's the right thread, so sometimes, uh, yeah, lack of tooling explains why we do things the way we do.
This morning's job, Trev is ripping a door off. This brown door here is a piece of solid plywood that um, is basically the door between the lounge and the wheelhouse that's coming off. We're going to be chopping it up, modifying it to suit, and we're going to be putting it down into um, one of the crew rooms downstairs. The door is off, so Trev's going to start chopping into that and get that the right size. I can smell wood down here. Something's happening. There we go. Construction. What are you up to? Just making a nuisance on myself. <laughs> so what he's doing is basically stapling together these um, bits of wood, and then we'll get them um, epoxied. And these are going to become the temporary legs for the bed downstairs until we redesign it for the sea berths. But this is going to be crew member number one's um, bedding and accommodation area. Right, mounting holes tap. So we've got our four clearance holes around the edge. We've got our three mounting holes in the middle. So we'll go and um, grind these up to make them both identical. The holes are identical, we'll make the outsides identical. And then we'll bolt the winches up and we'll start getting these up onto the roof. Moment of truth, let's see if it worked. So, facing forward like that. Whoop, whoop. And they look to line up. I think we'll call that a win. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yay, food. So one of the things I really like about working on this boat is Jess and I are both like really into food, even though we can only eat really restrictive amount of food, type of food. I do love my food breaks. Bit of a windy day up on the roof, but lovely clear day. Overcast, so it's not so hot. My plan at the moment, what I need to do is mount the winch on the top of the roof. We were going to try and tuck it underneath the roof lip, but we're just not going to be able to fit it, so we're giving up on that. We're going to put it on top of the roof and then run our pulleys and cables across on a diagonal. Now we're also going to use that as an opportunity to make a handrail um, that's going to have a pipe incorporating the cable so you can't grab the cable you can only grab a pipe that goes around the outside that'll make more sense when we actually make the handrail and everything so in terms of weather protection for these winches we're always going to have a bit of a compromise up here with a winch on the roof but it's uh, a compromise that we can handle the winch is going to be inside a stainless box so the stainless box is going to be um, completely sealed from the front so any sort of forward um, spray etc is going to be you know shrouded off there's going to be a little slot where the cable comes out so that's the only place that water can get in and out 
and then inside the winch itself we're going to lithium grease all the electronics and we're going to uh, grease the cable itself so every every possible area that we can protect is going to be protected So they sit like this, so the black, this, this plate bolts to the frame of the winch, and then these three bolts are what bolts it to the boat. So those four... Gosh, it looks so tiny, really. I know. Those four bolts sit in those as clearance holes, and then those three tap holes there hold it onto the plate. Boy, it doesn't seem like much, just three bolts. I think I'm starting to get the extent of my over-engineering. What do you mean? Like they've they put a five thousand pound winch on a piece of six mil steel with three <laughs> bolts and said that, that's all right. Yeah. It obviously is, or else they'll get a lawsuit if it broke. So. Learning on that, on three of those. Yeah. Uh, they're too small. They're not. They're, I promise you, that's they're not. It's tiny. Okay, these are. Eight. One of the annoying things with having to use flux core wire is it's really soft. So think of it more like solder, solder, as the Americans like to call it. Um, it's not, it's solder. So think of it about as sort of soft as that versus like an actual piece of wire that's quite stiff. So when you're pushing it quite far, like in this case I'm pushing it four meters, pretty much right the way across the back roof, um, it really struggles to feed down the rollers and you end up with bird's nests. Normally it's okay, but at the moment, uh, my tip on the welder, 0.9 tip, is a wee bit um, sort of bound up with rubbish. So basically that adds to resistance, and then that makes the um, makes it harder to push it down the length of the liner, and then you get a bird's nest in the welder. It's a long, took a long time to get to that expl explanation. Um, but yeah, so easy fix. You gotta pull the wire out of the gun. So four meters of wire goes in the bin. It's not really that big a deal. Each roll's got like, I don't know, five kilometers of wire or something stupid. Um, put a new tip in. Um, when I'm welding with 0.9 wire with flux core, I use a 1.2 mil tip so that it doesn't um, bind up as much. Cause you do need the heat to get into the wire. As soon as it starts getting hotter with a 0.9 tip, it starts binding up more and more. So little trick I use to try and prevent that is to use a tip that's one size bigger. I was never the one to write up a song with just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Because I've always been told that things will unfold. I'll give these corners a bit of a sweep up. Get all of that slag and rubbish off because that will rust. Um, don't really want it rusting over on the roof here. Get rid of both of them. And then we'll get some two pack on those. And that's me for the day. I think we're ready to start packing up and head to Adelaide. So there we go. So that's um, welded in. I've only done one pass around the whole thing, but there's no way that's coming off. If that's coming off, the wheelhouse has already come off.
Meanwhile, Trevor's playing Carpenter. <laughs> what are you up to? Hey, we've got a bed in here. This is uh, crew number one's bedroom. Um, so we're organising um, drawers and stuff down the end. Trevor's doing insulation and the bed. He's done the bed legs and everything already. The insulation goes above the door up here. So you can see he's got some 50 mil um, aluminium glued in there. And that's because all of these beams here are 50 mil. Um, and we need to be able to, this one's slightly out Trev. I don't think that one's going to fit mate. There's a hammer there. Oh okay, fair enough. Fix it. It's yeah. a bit of a gap to weld there and that one's, that one, that gap's a bit too little. I'm using sicker. Oh sweet as. Yeah you'll be able to, it's only a less I'll than get a, that. It's I'll less than that. a foot, you'll fill that up. I'll get that. Yeah cool. I'll get that. Right, so glad we clarified that. Um, there's a panel that goes over top of all of this area here so we need these 50 mil um, supports put in so that we can glue to them. So this is a panel that never comes off. So yeah, easy done. Look at that guy trying to figure out where he's sitting. <laughs> so we're at the train station now. So we're going to jump in the train now. It's a five hour trip down to Brisbane. We'll get in a, a plane tomorrow morning, which is a three hour trip to Adelaide. Um, and then we're going to be jumping in the hire car and driving back to Bundaberg. Um, so it's about 24 hours of solid driving between the three of us. And uh, yeah, we'll have our new crew member plus a little surprise. So we'll see you then. You got ice like summer sky. If it's my good kill, I die. And now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it.